And a special welcome to all of our viewers today joining us over Facebook Live. And we also have another special welcome today to the young men from the Safe Harbor home who are joining us today for our Thanksgiving luncheon. A list of needs for the Thanksgiving and holiday food baskets for Arlington Community Services to families in need is located in the entryway. Please return to food next Sunday. Today is our Thanksgiving luncheon after worship. Please join us, everyone is welcome. Now Sandy has a couple of announcements for us. Good morning. We are glad you are here. Please come to, uh, to lunch and, um, and you probably can smell the turkey and the gravy and the stuffing. The men have been working on it all morning, so uh, we're, it's going to be quite a feast. Um, I wanted to just touch base with you about uh, the stewardship program. Uh, thank you for sending your cards in. We appreciate it. We're going to have a dedication this morning. If you haven't done it, you'll find some green stewardship cards in the pews. And if you'd like to fill that out, please, and turn it in today or turn it in sometime in the next two weeks, we would really be happy. This helps us be, um, this helps us with uh, planning for our budget for next year. Also, uh, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, bright and early, we transform the church into Christmas. So if you could come and help us, fluff wreaths, put up the stuff, um, put, put up the uh, pew decorations or help with Christmas trees, we'd sure appreciate it. If more hands make the job go quicker. And now Arlene has something to share about our alternative gift market. Thanks. Good morning, all. Good morning. Good morning. Once again, we're having our annual alternative gift market. Uh, the two organizations, uh, Missions has chosen this year to uh, gift. Uh, the donations are um, Arlington Elementary School and Volunteers in Medicine. Um, for those who are not familiar with the alternative gift market, it's the opportunity for us, our members, our friends, to make a donation to one or both charities we have chosen this year uh, in honor of someone on their gift list. Lots of people don't want any things anymore. There are lots of folks who are downsizing. And this is the opportunity to honor someone on your gift list. By giving the donation, you'll get a beautiful card that you can personalize and uh, there is a bit of information on a handout in, in the card. And so the person who receives that card from you knows where uh, your money has gone in their honor. The gift market will be on Sunday, December 12th. We're having it just one Sunday this year. So please come. If you, if you can't be in church, you can always mail a donation. We'll have cards put aside for you. And this is just a, a worthwhile, easy thing for us to do. And uh, it just helps those that we partner with. Thank you. In the fellowship hall, when you go back for the Thanksgiving luncheon, there is a stack of books that are free for anyone. They're left over from um, the pastor's library. And next Sunday, we hope you come back and join us. It is our annual Hanging of the Green service at 10 o'clock. The youth will lead the service as we explain the Christian meaning behind many of the decorations we use during Advent and Christmas. Please let me know if you would like to participate. We're still looking for speakers, and we'd love to have you if you're willing to join us. Again, welcome. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here. Now let's start our worship service this morning with our welcome song.
join me in the opening prayer and the Lord's Prayer. We come to give you thanks, O oh God, for all the blessings we have known, for our country and its bounty, for our neighbors and our diversity, for your love, which teaches us to find ways to bless and give and rejoice. Help us as we seek to change the world in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Mr. Aiden and Mr. Noah. These are the young men that you've helped support 
in their life's journey. Um, once again, we can't thank you enough. We invite you anytime you're in the area or anything, please, please, please stop by and see us in action. Well, maybe that. <laughs> but, and thank you for inviting us for lunch. Um, we, I did feed them before they came, so there should be some left for you. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much. What, and I look forward to coming back. Um, so if you think of questions, because I will do another question session. I understand that was really nice that you like to ask the questions and have some answers. Um, but happy Thanksgiving. And we're always glad when uh, Leslie comes and she's always very informative. And we will be planning a trip, a field trip out there to Safe Harbor after the first of the year when we can come and see them in action. We've been out there before and it's always a treat. So we look forward to going out there again. We'll let you know in plenty of time so you can all plan to come. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you so much. And we have cards for all the boys. They get gift cards. Okay. I think there are 12 of them. And then the staff gets a card. All right. And then the staff gets a gift. Woohoo, staff. The staff is very important. Don't you think I am? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We come now this morning to our time of prayer. And each time we gather, we first call the names of those in our community who are in need, those, are in, those who are in our community who need comfort and need strength and need our hearts to reach out to them. This day, we remember Dottie, Dick and Elvira, Marty and Mary, Larry and Gretchen, Reverend Sharon, Tom, Donna, Reverend Ron, Harriet, Wayne, Susan, Bill, Warren, Jose. Let us hold these in our hearts this day as we pray together. Oh God, how great you are. You blanketed our earth with ocean, covered the mountains with deep waters, mountains pushed up and valleys spread out. You sent the springs and rivers flowing among the hills where the wild animals now drink their fill and the birds build their nests. You gave us a wildly wonderful world and supply your people with every blessing in abundance. Gracious God, we lift our hearts in gratitude and thanksgiving this day. Help us, we pray, to thank you for the gifts we seldom notice, to praise you for the bounty we often take for granted, and to glorify your name for how you have watched over us through a year that we often felt was lacking. For all that you have done, for all that you are, and for all that you will ever do, we lift our voices in praise to you. Hear our prayer, O God and help us to live always as ones with eternally grateful hearts. And now let us continue our prayer in silence.
on this day when we have gathered our gifts and our commitments for the coming year. There is an often quoted scripture, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And when it comes to our possessions, there is a psychological divide on whether you can aim your heart in the right place and then your treasures will fall in line or whether one must change the behavior of how they act toward possessions and the heart follows then and deepens its commitment. Both occur today. You give because you have seen ministry occur here that touches your heart. Others give because of what you hope for. Some give out of generosity. Some give out of responsibility. And then all of these gifts work together for the good of this church and the broader community. These are your commitments. One of my favorite verses is found in the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This measure that we commit this day to this community is from you and for God. We offer our blessing this day on these gifts that we may use them with passion and generosity to further our mission to bring the light of Christ into this world. Let us pray. O oh, Holy One who dwells in our midst, you abide in each heart and root yourself in us and our communities. Yet always you push us beyond our comfortable places, calling us into the ever wider world of human need and human diversity. You challenge us through these gifts to recognize in others your beloved face, we offer these gifts to you as an act of love. Take them and multiply them. Show us how to create a world where the stranger is welcome, greeted as cherished of God, honored with justice, engaged in peace. All of this we ask in the name of the one who calls us friend and invites us to ponder ever more deeply, who is my neighbor? Amen.
Today's scripture lesson comes from Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more than the value of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, and is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Children. 
We write stories for the children when we want the adults to listen. And so I invite you to hear, or perhaps hear again with fresh ears. Once upon a time, a stranger rode into a village, rode his tired horse down a backcountry road on his way home from a long journey. It was late afternoon and the man was hungry. As he saw a small village, he thought, I'll get something to eat here and find a place to rest for the night. Suddenly the horse tripped, throwing him to the ground. As he brushed himself off, he saw that the horse had stumbled over a rock sticking up from the ground in the middle of the road. He walked over to it and dug it out of the earth so that it would not trip anyone else. It was a splendid rock, though, perfectly round and smooth. So rather than throw it away, he put it in his saddlebag, climbed up on his horse, and continued toward the village. Have you ever ridden into a neighborhood where people looked at you as if you didn't belong? As the stranger rode past, the village people froze in place and stared. He waved, but no one waved back. He got off his horse and approached a woman standing in front of a small house. Good evening, could you spare a bit of food for a stranger, a hungry man tonight? The woman began shaking her head before he even finished his sentence saying, we had a poor harvest here. There is barely enough food for our family, saying, I'm sorry, as she walked into her house and shut the door. The man continued on to the next house where a farmer was working on his wagon. Do you have a place at your table for a hungry traveler, he asked. It didn't rain much, Last month before harvest, the farmer said, we need what we have, what little we have for our children. At every home, the stranger heard the same story. The harvest had been poor. There wasn't enough food to make it through the winter. Everyone was very worried about themselves and their immediate family. Completely discouraged and very hungry, the man sat down under a tree in the village square, thinking, in a few weeks, these people will be hungrier than I am. Suddenly an idea hit him. He reached into his saddlebag and took out the stone and called out to the villagers, gentle folk of the village, he shouted, I have in my hand a special stone that will help you make it through the long winter. A magic stone. And with it, you can make stone soup. Stone soup, an old man repeated. I had never heard of stone soup. The wonder of stone soup, the stranger continued is that it not only feeds hungry people, it also brings people together. Now, who has a large empty pot? Quickly, someone found a huge iron pot and delivered it to the stranger in a wheelbarrow. This kettle is barely large enough, but we will make do, said the stranger. Now we must fill the pot with water and start a fire. And some eager hands carried buckets of water and firewood. Soon the pot was placed over a roaring fire. As the water began to boil, immediately the stranger raised the magic stone above his head, and then he gently placed it into the kettle. Stone soup really needs salt and pepper, the stranger announced. Two children knew where to find salt and pepper. After the water had boiled a few minutes, he sipped the brew. This stone makes an excellent soup, 
But it would be better if we had a few carrots. We have some carrots that we're willing to share, the farmer replied. And immediately his daughter ran home and returned with an apron full of carrots. It's too bad that the harvest was bad this year, said the stranger. Soup is always so much better, so much more tasty when we add a cabbage or two. I think I know where to find a cabbage, a young mother shouted as she ran home. When she returned, she was carrying not one, but three large cabbages. The stranger got busy slicing carrots and cabbages with his hunting knife. The last time I made soup was at the castle of a wealthy man. He added a few potatoes and just a bit of beef. The people around him started whispering silently. A bit of beef and we can eat like we are in the castle. They went home and soon returned, not only with beef and potatoes, but with some milk and onions and barley, too. It was almost dark before the soup was ready, and the most delicious smell drifted through the village. The stranger finally declared, it's done, and invited everyone to eat. After they had eaten their fill, the fiddles came out, the villagers danced together and sang until the wee hours of the morning. Never had they seen such a wonderful party. The next morning, the whole village gathered to say goodbye to the stranger. As he mounted his horse, a small child called out, Wait, you forgot the magic stone. I'm going to leave the stone with you, he said, as my gift of gratitude for your hospitality. Remember, as long as you make stone soup, you will not have to worry about being hungry. As he rode off, a grandfather put his arm around his young granddaughter and said, Do you remember the other bit of magic that the stranger promised when you make stone soup? Yes, she said. The stone brings people together. As we celebrate Thanksgiving, we honor the goodness of our God in providing us the bounty of the earth and sea and sky and all of creation. The goodness of God who grants us time to plant and time to harvest and who instills compassion in us. Count your many blessings, name them one by one, is a spiritual practice that I believe we are all called to. Sometimes Thanksgiving just is. It burst from our heart and we couldn't keep it back if we tried. Other times, we prepare for it. We seek for it. Some blessings are quite large. If you woke up this morning with more health than illness, you are blessed. For more than a million people will not survive this week. If you have never experienced the danger of battle, the loneliness of imprisonment, or the pains of starvation, then you are blessed. If you have food in your refrigerator, clothes on your back, a roof over your head, and a place to sleep, you are blessed. And here is the funny thing about Thanksgiving. I have heard the dying, the mistreated, those without homes, and the hungry all say the words the same words, I am blessed. Gratitude is a spiritual gift that can come to us in the most dire of circumstances. And in gratitude, we find our resilience. I met resilience face to face a while back at the hospital one day. 
staff were caring for a severely mentally disabled, mentally disturbed female patient who screamed for hours and hours, with security having to intervene when she became combative and pushed her nurse. I visited several patients in the rooms nearby her, knowing how disturbing this is for other patients. In one room, I met an elderly man who I knew to be nearing the end of his life. When I told him I was a chaplain, he said, I hope this is your last visit. And the way he said it, I understood at first him to me that he did not want to speak to a chaplain. And I said, I can respect that. Would you like your privacy? And he said, no, 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 that's not what I mean. And he clarified, I hope this is the last time you see me. I want this to be over. I'm ready to go home. And he meant home, home. And we began to talk, asking him how he was with what was happening. He said, I feel good about my life. Don't get me wrong, I've made some bad choices, but I have a good life. I have wonderful family, children, and grandchildren. He spoke with deep gratitude about those he has loved and who love him. I told him I was grateful for the way that he was taking these moments to reflect on his life and encouraged him to think about the small ways in the coming days that he could find meaning in the time that he had left. I asked if he wanted to pray, and he said, yes, I would like that. So I ask him, other than what you've told me, is there anything that you would like for me to include in our prayer? His answer surprised me and was the mark of a resilient spirit that does not mire down in his own quicksand. He said, I want you to pray for the woman next door. She is in such deep, deep pain, and I know they don't know how to help her. I believe that it is the outpouring of gratitude which instills in us the ability to open our eyes and see the one next to us and hear their needs. I do believe, too, that it is sometimes that we open our eyes and see the one next to us who is hurting, and with that experience, we open our hearts in gratitude. The word resilience is not in the Bible, but the definition is the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Jesus, as you heard in the Sermon on the Mount, Sermon on the Mount in the reading today, said, do not ask these questions anxiously. What are we to drink? What are we to wear? I love this passage because it makes God's care for us so plain and simple. But the truth is, when we are afraid, it is just plain normal to ask questions. Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. But we know it is just plain human to feel anxious at times. I like to think that Jesus did not mean by this passage that we throw all caution to the wind, but that we not worry so much about tomorrow that it keeps us from falling in love with today. In that is a word of hope and courage for anyone, any church on their journey. And sometimes on their interim journey. You are full of questions about your future as a church and likely sprinkled with some worry. The story of Stone Soup 
is about sharing and caring when blessings seem scarce. The stranger knew something about today's scripture, yet with a simple stone, he helped people see beyond their own anxiety to be able to see the goodness that was all around them. We all face difficult and sometimes harsh experiences in our lives. This story reminds us that everyone, no matter how poor they are, can find that hope. There is a story, well actually before my story, that sounds a lot like a stewardship campaign, doesn't it? It does. This church and probably most churches in the country have had two years of difficult months where we have seen not a full harvest, but shortfalls where finances are concerned. And every year, we are asked to go back into our homes and see what we have to offer as we demonstrated with our commitment cards this morning. And it happens in so many ways. While gratitude is about counting our blessings, it's not only that. It's the dynamic relationship between giving thanks and feeling gratitude, expressing that gratitude, and then sharing a portion of it. Sharing those blessings, be they a few or be they many. Like a village, we see an elementary school in need, and one brings paper, and one brings crayons, and one brings a ruler, and one brings notebooks, and suddenly you have a classroom set free from lack of to one of abundance that creates space where true education can happen. When you bring cereal, and you bring pork and beans, and you bring peanut butter, and you bring flour, and you bring sugar, before you know it, you fill a pantry that will feed dozens of people. There is a story about a Native American grandfather who was talking to his grandson and said, we feel sometimes as if we have two wolves fighting in our own hearts. One wolf is angry or violent. The other wolf is loving and compassionate. The grandson asks, which wolf will win the fight? And the grandfather answered, the one we feed. The one we feed. For us, one wolf is filled with tension and worry. The other wolf is focused on gratitude and abundance. The question is the same for us in our hearts and for us as church. Which one shall we feed? We are called to be like the people of that village who heard the voice of the traveler and learned not to cling to what they had out of fear and to open their doors, first out of curiosity and then to be embraced by the care of others and to catch that spirit and go and dig into their own storehouses to see what they had to offer. We are also called to be the traveler, keeping a keen eye open for how we might invite others to open their closed doors, for how we might call others to deeply experience their abundance in this life, for how we call others to look into the eyes of our neighbors. When we can do that, when we can make soup and the magic God's Spirit is then done. May it ever be so. Amen.
every day. The call from this service into the community is a simple one. Go and find your ingredients and make soup. Go in peace. Amen.